Queen of Spades, and I'm reading Celebration of Women's History Month, Gifts for the People and Spirit. I am reading a book entitled Shark Lady, the true story of how Eugenie Clark became the ocean's most fearless scientist. Written by Jess Keating, illustrations by Marta Alvarez McGowan. It was Saturday and Eugenie wanted to stay at the aquarium forever. She wanted to smell the damp, salty air and stare at the glittery rainbow of fish. She wanted to keep watching her favorite animals, the sharks. Eugenie pretended she was walking on the bottom of the sea. What it would be like to swim with her sharks, to breathe underwater with gills of her own. More than anything, she wanted to find out. When summer came, Eugenie's mother took her to swim at the beach in Atlantic City. Stuffing sticky gum in her ears to keep the water out, Eugenie dove down, down, down. The salt stung her eyes, but she didn't want to miss a single fish. Constellations of sea stars speckled in pebbled sand. She imagined a silvery fin standing strong on her back, slicing through the ocean current. Others, sharks were ugly and scary, but Eugenie knew they were beautiful. As she glided through the cool water, she wished everyone could see sharks through her eyes. But the sharks were only in her mind for now. Eugenie decided to learn everything she could about them, so she dove. this time into books. Whale sharks, nurse sharks, tiger sharks, lemon sharks. Eugenie wanted to know all about them. She also joined the Queens County Aquarium Society as its youngest member. Eugenie's notebooks filled with sharks. They swam in her daydreams and on the margins of her pages. At home, Eugenie's mother surprised her with an aquarium of her own. A 15 gallon tank was much too small for sharks, but Eugenie saved her allowance to buy guppies, clownfish, and coral red snails. It felt as big as an ocean in her room. Their small apartment became an aquarium, a laboratory, and a sanctuary. As she grew older, many were still telling Eugenie what to do. Forget those sharks, be a secretary, be a housewife. Eugenie wanted to study zoology, but some of her professors thought women weren't smart enough to be scientists or brave enough to explore the oceans. And they said sharks were mindless monsters. Eugenie knew better. Her dream was as big as a whale shark, so again, Eugenie dove. She plunged herself in every course she could. Her laboratory became her home. From sunrise to sunset, she studied how to grow fish, how they behave, and how they were put together both inside and out. Despite all the people who didn't believe in her, Eugenie was becoming one of the smartest students in her field. Even after she earned her degree, many still doubted her. But Eugenie's work was just beginning. Eager to make discoveries of her own, Eugenie finally dove into an open ocean. In the Red Sea, Eugenie collected hundreds of fish, including three species 
that had never been discovered before. Red Sea Sand Diver, Bard Xenia Pipefish, and the Volcano Triplefin. On a research mission exploring a Palau Islands, Eugenie was diving alone when she encountered her first ever wild shark. She wasn't afraid. Instead, she thought it was beautiful. In Isla Mujeres, she dispelled the myth that sharks must keep moving to stay alive when she swam through dark caves, still and silent, full of resting sharks. Eugenie's daring heart grew bolder with each dive. Soon they began to call her Shark Lady. Eugenie had proven she was smart enough to be a scientist and brave enough to explore the oceans. As her courage grew, she began to love and understand her beloved sharks more and more. But she never forgot many still believe that sharks were mindless killers. Because of their scary reputations, people were hunting sharks all over the world. Eugenie knew that sharks weren't stupid or mean. She was determined to prove everyone wrong. Eugenie fished through her mind and devised a brilliant experiment. Could she train a shark the way a person trains a dog? Were sharks much smarter than anyone knew? They were. Eugenie was the first scientist in the world to train sharks to even learn they could remember their training for at least two months after. Sharks were not mindless killers. Sharks were beautiful. Sharks were smart. They deserved to be studied, protected, and loved. And Eugenie's dream was now a dream come true. And there's some little tidbits we're going to read together. So this is called Shark Bite. Dangerous monsters? No way. There are over 400 species of sharks. And of these, many, only about a dozen are known to be dangerous to humans. And encounters are extremely rare. The truth is, despite their fearsome reputations, humans are much more dangerous to sharks than they are to us. Every year, humans kill more than 100 million sharks. It's important to treat sharks with respect, but there is no need to fear them. Sleep tight? Eugenie once swam in a cave full of peaceful, resting sharks suspended in the water. But, there was, but were they really sleeping? Sharks breathe by using their gills to extract oxygen from water. Eugenie noticed that the cave was filled with sleeping sharks, had more oxygen than usual. She believed that this extra oxygen would make it easier for motionless sharks to breathe, so they didn't need to swim to pass water over their gills. Before confirming this discovery, she believed the sharks had to keep moving to stay alive. No toothbrush here. Sharks have impressive teeth arranged in rows along their gums. These teeth are constantly being grown and move forward in their mouths like a conveyor belt. Was Eugenie afraid of sharks because of their sharp teeth? No way. She was only bitten once in her life and the encounter didn't even happen underwater. Once on her way to school visit with the mounted jaws of the tiger shark behind her, beside her in her car, Eugenie had to stop quickly at a red light. 
As she reached across the seat to stop the jaws from tumbling forward, the teeth chomped onto her arm. Sneaky skin. Sharks can move extremely fast in the water and the secret to their speed is their skin. Shark skin is made of a dermal denticles, which are more like teeth than fish scales. Some swimsuit designers have even created swimsuits that mimic shark skin to help Olympians swim faster in the water. Big, small, and everything in between. There is an incredible variety of sharks. The smallest in the world is a dwarf lantern shark at under seven inches long. The world's largest shark, the whale shark, measures over 40 feet. Once Eugenie was swimming with these giants in the Sea of Cortez, one swam very close to her. So close she was able to grab hold of it. She let it carry her for a long time until she finally let go and she realized she was far away from her boat. Mermaid purses. Some sharks give birth to live young. Others, like the dogfish, produce unique sacks of eggs that sustain their young. These leathery sacks are known as mermaid purses, and they provide young shark embryo with a safe place to grow. Sometimes it's possible to find a mermaid's purse on the shore if you look carefully. Life at the top. Sharks are apex predators. This means they're at the very top of the food chain in the ocean. Because of this, they play an important role in keeping food webs and prey population in balance. Without sharks, ocean ecosystems would collapse. Sharks are old, very old. The first sharks appeared over 400 million years ago, and their descendants are still around today. They have survived five major extinction events, including 165 million years ago that destroyed the dinosaurs. I hope you guys enjoyed this book as much as I did learning about Eugenie Clark. Uh, see you guys next time. Bye, boys and girls.